Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Feed the Beasts on the Naos Gaming Server. Uh, once again, we're in the Ultimate Mod Pack, um, so you see a diversity of items around us here in the house. Um, since the last episode, I've made a number of changes, uh, including a gruesome and horrible death uh, in a Mistcraft world. Uh, I finally read up on the Mistcraft mod and figured out how to... Uh, Put together a world, and I went over there and died horribly. Um, so I lost a bunch of stuff and needed quite a bit of help to get back here. Um, fun story: uh, a creeper exploded, killing me, and then another one exploded immediately after, destroying the linking book that I had brought with me. Um, so I had to enlist the help of the uh, server admins um, to rescue me from. Uh, the miscraft world, so that's where we ended up with that, and that was not fun. Uh, but I have built up the house, as you see, and um, starting to go down the red power tech path with the windmill, um, namely because solar, at least for red power, does not work in the twilight forest, which was a fun discovery. But this windmill is actually being uh, pretty productive as far as the power is concerned and I'm smelting all my ores with it um, right now, and I'm pretty pretty happy. I thought when I had played around with it on the other server that it uh, was struggling to keep up uh, in keeping the batteries powered, but um, for some reason in this mod pack, uh, on the, the map that we have right now, it seems to be doing quite well. Um, so I'm not worried about that at all. Um, no, I'm stuck again. So, uh, let's go back downstairs and um, see what other updates we can see from the roof. Um, that farm is now wheat, and um, there's a couple corn stalks uh, that I plan to harvest after they grow in, um, but for the most part I've moved the corn over here. Um, and I also have carrots growing on that side. I got a carrot from a zombie. Um, so I'm growing carrots. Um, you see I put a roof over the enchanting um, outhouse? I don't know. And then I also built a little farm back here and got some uh, elk or whatever they are and some rams um, from uh, elsewhere and brought them over here using wheat. Um, so quite a few updates have occurred around the house. Um, it's still Hennequin over there, so nothing changed as far as that's concerned. Uh, in addition to that, I have equipped myself with a, an array of backpacks. And this is actually the second time I have equipped myself with this array of backpacks. Um, basically just to test out how useful um, each of these backpacks would be. Uh, I constructed all of them and then went around for a while playing to see what sort of things each backpack would pick up. And I have to say that the ones I like the most are still the Miner's and the Digger's backpack, um, but uh, if I were to pick a third favorite, it would be the Hunter's backpack. Um, this picks up a number of mob drops, um, and it picks up uh, arrows and things like that. So things that can can clog your inventory pretty quickly um, will all go into that hunter's backpack. Uh, the builder's backpack also pretty useful in that it can carry, um, I believe it can carry the oak planks, uh, any any kind of wood planks that you would have, yeah, um, and the stone and the cobblestone and stuff I believe will also go in there if you have them. Oh, not so much, but they will go into the miner or uh, the digger's backpack, so that's not really a concern. Um, I don't have any uh, stone brick to test it out, but we can make some. I'm curious as to whether this will go into the builder's backpack. Yep, that goes in there nicely. Stone goes in there, and uh, wood planks go in there. Um, so you can store all that stuff in here and uh, not worry about it taking up inventory space. I'm going to drop off this. I am on my reserve <laughs> set of armor because I lost all my all my good armor. Um, I had it enchanted everything with uh, protection one. Uh, done some level one enchants on some of my tools. 
um, just to, to make things go more efficiently, and of course I lost all that when I died, um, so that wasn't fun. Uh, I've made a couple of seed bags, uh, oh, I think I made just the one seed bag that I'm using for this wheat farm over here. Yeah, so I have seeds in there right now, um, and I'm trying to breed up the livestock over here uh, with the wheat from the wheat farm. I'm trying to keep a good stock of string going because things like that red power uh, windmill up there require quite a bit of string. Um, and that uh, that sail on the red power windmill has a durability associated with it. Um, so after a while of, of spinning around up here, it will um, break inside this turbine, I believe it's called. Uh, this is a problem. And of course I'm lazy enough that I don't open the backpack to get to my stuff, but yeah, you see this wood turbine has a has a durability on it, so eventually this will wear down and we'll have to replace it. Uh, there are two of these wind turbines that you can work with. There's a horizontal one that looks like sort of a Dutch windmill, and then there's this one. This one is supposed to be the more efficient and more productive one, so um, that's why I've constructed it. Um, and it's... I'm doing quite nicely and smelting all these ores down for me. Um, I did have a backlog of dust from the pulverizer, and that is no longer an issue. Um, I'm currently at the point where I can go mining again. Um, but what I wanted to show, or try to show, was uh, the process of making uh, these books. Uh, oh good, I was worried that I had my notebook with me. <laughs> So I have this equipped. Uh, I've made an, a couple of ink vials, which you make with water and uh, two ink sacs, two or three ink sacs, uh, a, and a bottle of water, and you get an ink vial, and that'll fill this up. Uh, ni it's nice you get your, your bottle back after doing that. Um, put paper here, and what you can do is, um, I believe, you, you can put the pages anywhere over here that you find. Um, in the various chests and things, um, and then what you do is you copy these pages, and you do that by right-clicking them, and then you can pick up this page and take it out, and I'll right-click this one, and take it out, um, and then what you can do is you can take them over here um, to your binding and try to make um, a phrase out of them, and of course I don't have enough pages to make any kind of useful phrase, um, so you end up just making a generic uh, book, um, as long as you put leather in here, and that's how you get a descriptive book that can be edited, and of course you can name it up there, you can also put it in here, and you can see uh, the symbols that are associated with it, and um, you can also rename it in here as well. Um, so that's basically how the intro miscraft stuff works, but until you get a fair number of pages, all your worlds that you create will be unstable. And instability means that you will get little purple corruption blocks, it means that you will get um, harmful effects like nausea and mining fatigue and things like that over here. And um, so that can potentially be an issue for you. So the other thing you're going to want to do for Mistcraft is um, uh, get one of these uh, books and go ahead and make yourself a regular linking book. And that will basically link you back from wherever you go to um, the location that you are when you make the book. Um, so it will bring you right back here facing that way and you know every, every the position that you were in when you when you made the book is the location and direction you'll be when you link back. Um, the other thing you would want to do before you go through um, a linking book, here I'll just make more planks, um, and are my sticks in the builder's bag? Uh, no, but all these planks are sticks. I know I have sticks, so don't mess with me. There they are. Um, is make another one of these book stands, because when you get to the other world, um, you're going to want to make 
um, some kind of protective structure for yourself, um, which is also a good reason to take something like a cobble with you, um, something with some good blast resistance, in case of creepers, for example. Um, so that's how you start out, and then you can just click on this book, and I'm crossing my fingers as I click on here to go through. And of course it will take a little bit of time to generate the world, and apparently create this annoying animation, but you see I have mining fatigue and blindness right now. Um, so we know already that we're in a curved world because we have those effects going. Okay, and I have that annoying, it's created a platform for me. Um, one of the other things you're probably going to want to do once um, you are here is build a protective structure for the book. But you set your book stand and you set your linking book back um, so that you can get back when you need to. I usually go ahead and make a crafting table for myself in the world and um, I will also make a chest typically um, for materials that I might need and then of course you're going to want to make a door uh, for your little structure that you built. Mining fatigue is a pain. Um, so I'm probably not going to want to hang out here too much if these are the effects. I can't see what's below me. Uh, it's not void. Uh, okay, yeah, see? So the blindness went away long enough for us to see that this world is kind of suspended in midair. Um, so we could easily die if we mine down too far. Yeah, so this, this world I don't like at all. Okay, so we've created a another world, and this one doesn't have blindness, so... Uh, for recording purposes, much more useful. It does, unfortunately, have horrible mining fatigue in it, uh, which isn't fun. Um, kind of like to see if that goes away under the water. No, it doesn't. Um, in prior iterations, it used to be able to do things like go under the water to get rid of the effects. Um, but apparently they fixed that. Or broken it. I'm not sure which. Um, but this is a pretty nice world, uh, being a cave world, because we can actually see where some of the ores are. Um, for instance, over here we can see there's a, a large amount of copper. Um, so hopefully we can try to get up there and, um, mine that. Oh, hello. Oh. Um, he did not have a lot of health, apparently. Oh, he probably lost it when he dropped down here. Uh, copper, that's where I was going, over here. Yep, right, right up there. Um, I would like to get up in the side of this, maybe. Uh, hello, place a block, please. Thank you. There we go. That nice and dried out. I did forget to set my waypoint, so I'm not going to go out of visual range of that, uh, structure right now. Um, let's see if I can get up here. Maybe get a horizontal read on it. Oh, here's a skeleton coming from somewhere. Go away, please. Thanks for the bone. Is there any easier to access copper? <laughs> Uh, this might be a dense ores world, based on um, what I'm seeing right now. Um, I'm not sure. Um, it is going to be time consuming to mine things in this world if we're going to have mining fatigue 3. Um, it could stand to be a bit irritating. I uh, don't mind straight up silly. Just trying to get some blocks. I did leave a lot of inventory behind until I was able to determine whether or not this is going to be a stable world or not. Um, so I've learned my lesson after 
I'm getting stuck in a corrupt world, that's, uh, yeah, don't, uh, don't take your valuable stuff with you until you find out what you're getting into, at least. Oh, mining fatigue. I thought there was another copper over this direction, um, but I can't really remember. Yeah, I just need to go straight on for a little bit. So I'm just going to grab some more resources over here, and then I will bring you back in. So I'm trying a little experiment. Um, since I have Mining Fatigue 3 in this world, um, I brought my turtle over here, and um, he has a bucket of lava, so a thousand moves, and um, what I'm going to try, I don't know why this would not be the case, but I, yeah, he doesn't have mining fatigue, um, so he can go ahead and do any mining I might need him to do, and then I don't have to worry about um, any sort of mining fatigue. Um, this is a bright, uh, world, so I don't have to worry about darkness in here. Um, so all in all, it isn't, a, a bad environment. Um, for mining. So, I will build a bridge. Uh, in the meantime, and uh, let him do his thing. And hopefully we can find some more copper that way. I did get almost a stack of copper on my own. Um, I spent quite a bit of time wandering around looking for uh, some kind of mistcraft structure um, to see if there would be any additional pages that I could use to make a more stable world. Um, but I did not find any of that kind of thing. Oh, the perfect number of blocks. Um, so, unfortunately, we are stuck with uh, this unstable world for the time being. And uh, if the trail is successful in finding stuff for us, uh, that won't matter too much. So I'm just going to let him mine and um, hopefully find some more fun stuff for me. Um, I'll probably have to take him up to a higher level uh, to stand a chance of getting a fair amount of copper. It is pretty low still at this level, so... Well, that's it for the time being. Thanks for watching.